Welcome back to the channel today, and I'm your host, Coach Evans, with Sip the Tally Films. And today we're going to take a look at Johan or Johan Dotson. Uh, if I'm mispronouncing the first name, charge it to my head, not my heart. But Dotson was a prospect that interests me because, as in looking at other guys, when I was looking at the the um, left tackle for Penn State, Dotson stood out on film for me. When I was looking at the Michigan game versus um, Penn State, Dot, you know, when I was looking at Hutchinson or Jabu. Dotson stood out to me. Uh, he made a couple catches versus Auburn that made me, you know, kind of take a second look at the player. So I just really wanted to, you know, see what it was like when I focused on him. Uh, and this is the results of this. Roll the intro. <laughs> So taking a look at Dotson, he's, uh, well, let's go ahead and start with this. He's not going to help you in the blocking game. So, you know, as far as being a team member of no block, no rock, he's not going to help you that he's a small guy. He's a slot receiver, um, an interior twitchy guy. So as far as the blocking part, we, we don't even want to go there with him because he's not really going to, he'll give you effort and, and plays, but he's not going to help you in that. He's a playmaker. So let's start right there. This is our guy up here, right here. Circling the screen. Let me see if I can get some help with that. All right, here's our guy right here, and just just kind of watch his route run. He's able to to change directions with the best of them. This is against Auburn. Kind of stacks the guy inside, uses his hands to get off, and just sits right there in that spot. Now the thing is, this is where he's dangerous at after the catch. Uh, number zero, I think this is Monday, Smoke Monday, maybe, correct me if I'm wrong. He has a clear shot at him and kind of whiffs. Has a clear shot at, at Dotson and just, just whiffs. Ball caught. And this is one of the few balls, I, and I'm, I'm glad I saw this. This is one of the few balls I see him, I saw him catch with his body. His hands are immaculate. But again, making a guy miss, and that's what you want your slot receivers to do. Make a guy miss, and you know, this is versus SEC competition. You know, my bias is here. Made a guy miss and got a first down on a little short throw. Simple. But good slot receiver stuff. Was able to use his hands, get off the jam, and go from there. All right, this is our guy down here at the bottom versus uh, Penn State. I mean, versus Ohio State. You know, Ohio State and Michigan are kind of the classes, the class of the Big Ten. And if you disagree, put it in the comment section. But, you know, I took the best competition he had. Uh, this game versus Ohio State, the Auburn game. And then we got one play from another game that I'll show you. So I got down here at the bottom. He does a great job of working zones. But again, them hands I talked about. Great job of working zones. But his hands are incredible. Again, right here. And this is kind of right before the half. So they kind of playing soft, trying not to let him get down the field. And just watch him work in the zone and sit there. I mean, not sit there, but just work between the zone. It's, it's a great ball by the quarterback. Great ball by the quarterback, and he's a hands guy. Knowing he's going to get hit, working over the middle, and that's what you need your slot guys to do, to be able to work at the middle. Watch him go up and get this, knowing he's about to take a shot. He's going to come in from the left side of your screen. There he is right there working behind 14. Good anticipation. All hands. All hands. Between three people. Brace yourself for the impact. Get the first down, keep the chains moving. That's what you need out of the slot guy. Next play. This is him right here, number three. Again, working the zones. Knowing how to get in spaces. Knowing how to get in spaces and sit there and settle. So he widens out so this guy doesn't really, you know, affect him. Even though, you know, he kind of works his way to the corner. Look at him just settle. He know he knows that he's clearing this out. He's clearing that out. And I'm not sure what he's doing behind him, but he's basically clearing this out for him to have an open lane. That's why you gotta know your concepts. He does it. He's right there. Ready to receive the ball. The hands. All hands. And get up the field. Now, you know, he when they got him, they got him. He's not gonna make a whole bunch of guys miss. He's a smaller guy. So once they get him bottled up, he's pretty much gonna go down. But the thing is, getting him, getting, getting him bottled up. 
Now you got him as a um, a gadget guy. This is him right here there in the goal line situation. He's going to come in and play some quarterback. Normally, what Penn State does is they have this guy, 44, as a QB. And, you know, he's the jet motion guy, but they're trying to give him a little wrinkle now. Because both of them look like they're trying to play QB. But really, it's going to be a direct snap to five and just watch what he do. Hey, but outrun this cat. He didn't stand a chance. 44 got a great block on the edge. You just got to finish now. And that's all that matters right there. Him throwing that up. That's all that matters. All right, next play. It's at the bottom of your screen. Again, working them zones. Working them zones. That's what you need your slot guy to do to, to be able to recognize the defense, get in there and settle, and give your a quarterback an a opportunity to throw you the ball. You're just sitting there wide open. Just all this space, and he just find the open spot and just sitting there wide open. Sure hand the kid. He goes down because there's really no potential yak there. So I'm, I'm going to protect myself, which I don't have a problem with. He's a smaller guy. So I got right here. Still versus Ohio State. Now, this is this is the, the negative that we'll get out of him with him being a smaller guy. If you put him outside or put him on the edge or on the ball, this could potentially happen a lot. Just get jammed up, pushed out of bounds. But that's what you get when you have a guy of that stature. He don't really, you know, he tries to foot fire. He he kind of beats the guy, but he's so, this guy's way, way stronger than him. He, he reacts enough to get his hands on him and just run him out of bounds because of the outside release. Had, he, had it been an inside release, maybe he wins that, maybe he don't. Ah, but they're playing cover two. And if you watch the last film, um, when I was doing whatever receiver I was doing, Kyle Hamilton's cornerback allowed his guy to get outside. And they was able to hit a hole shot right there. I think it was Drake London. They was able to hit a hole shot right there. Well, he realizes he messed up. And he just going to run him out of bounds. That's what this corner does. And that protects this safety. That protects this safety. So he did a great job protecting his safety by doing that. But Dawson can't. You know, whether he go inside or outside, he got to find a way to get off these jams. Or he's going to be primarily a slot guy. All right, back versus over. This is him right here. Not a bad route. Let's break it down. Everything needs to look like a fade till it's not. Need to burst off the ball, close the cushion. He does. And this guy just kind of sits on it. So what ideally what you would like to do is get him to open his hips. Hold on. Give me one second. Ideally you'd like to get him to open his hips and spin right there. Then you can come in and, and settle down. But he does. He just kind of squats on it. He just kind of squats on it. And now what you want to do, you want to drive back. You want to drive back this way toward the ball. In a perfect world, you'd work back that way and keep this little taste of cushion you got. But he kind of settles. And this guy kind of closes on it. But he does a good job of catching the ball. Watch with his hands. a good job of catching the ball. He drove back a little bit, but had he pushed on back, he probably wouldn't even got touched until after he caught the ball. But his head, like I said earlier, his hands are great. Great hands. This is our kid up here at the top of the screen. Right there. I love his hands. Love his hands. He got a great set of hands. This is versus McCreary, and he's playing soft man, so this really ain't on him. They run the RPO. The read is zero. He comes down in. I'm well, not not zero. This is the read. He's gonna bail out to try to stop the bubble by zero. Then you got an open lane for a slant behind it. Quarterback reads it perfectly. 
He takes his foot in the ground, kind of flattens it out with the cushion. Look at that, all hands. That's what I love about his game. Uh, he don't, he's not in there corralling the ball, with it, letting it hit his body and all that stuff. He's a hands catcher, and I've probably said hands 15 times already. That's what I love about his game. Steele versus Auburn. Him coming in motion. Gadget guy. Little throwing a pass. Not the perfect pass, but you got to respect the fact that he can make plays from, from this. You know, he can catch this bubble and make plays. You got to respect it. This guy comes up because he knows that. He knows that. He dropped it right over his head. Again, not the perfect throw, but you never know when you're going to need something like that. You never know. And just the fact that he can do that, coaches have to plan for it. Defensive coaches have to plan for it. And that's five or ten minutes that they not planning for your base stuff. Top of your screen, up here. Working. Working. Just working around. Hands. Look how he worked it. Look how he worked in and out of different people. He gonna work in and out of different different levels. Hold on a second. He gonna work in and out of different levels. He gonna work inside there. He's gonna work across another dude. And then once he gets open, he's gonna shoot across. The end result is his hands, though. He's avoiding a lot of contact. He's going to avoid this right here. Now, you get, now all this room about to, about to come open because the tight end clearing it out. Now, 18 sees it late. And probably think he got to play on the ball because it looks overthrown. Oh, boy, we ain't got that thing, boy. And when you see it from the back, I don't know if I put it on here. Well, I didn't. He, he grabs that ball one hand first. Then comes back to it. Watching working space. Goal line situation. You need a guy that's going to find the open space. Find the open space. Not open. Now let's work. Keep working for my QB. Keep working for my QB. Hands. Not the greatest throw. I'm going to go up and get it. Help my QB out. Get my feet down. Easily. The fact of the matter is. I. This is a, an underestimated attribute for any receiver that using your hands just straight hands catch that's underestimated this cat if he can figure out the nuance of running routes in the nfl the fact that he catch the ball with his hands are only gonna, gonna help him now this is versus one of the premier corners in college football you don't really get much separation which leads me to think he's more quick than he is fast mccreer ain't slow now mccreer is not slow that's good technique by McCray, getting his hip pocket and, you know, using that sideline to force him out. Now, against top-level talent, he's okay. He's an okay guy. No, you know, he he, he had 11-some catches versus, um, who was that? Well, I forgot my Patriots. Here it is. He had 11 catches versus Ohio State. Had um, 10 versus Auburn. But when you put scrubs in front of him, Watch what happened. This is our guy up here. This is the first play of the game versus Villanova. When you put scrubs in front of him, he dominates. Push him up, stick the foot in the ground, and run away. <laughs> Against top end guys, you know, he, he does what he has to do. He crafts it. You know, he catches the ball with his hands and runs good routes. And he's an okay receiver. But you put scrubs in front of them, they get the top blown off. And you can put them in motion and kind of do this stuff from the slot too. If you get a matchup you like. He can split the middle of the defense. If they run cover two and they try to wall him off with a um with the linebacker or something, he can get over the top of that linebacker. Especially if you got guys outside that's gonna threaten the corners and threaten the safeties to widen out. So, you know, not a bad prospect. He had finished, I'm not sure the number of catches he had total, but I really like, you know, what I see in this kid. He's the, the prototypical slot receiver. Kind of reminds me of a faster James Prochet. And I know, you know, if you're not a Ravens fan, you probably don't know who I'm talking about. But he's he, to me, reminds me of a faster James Prochet with um, an upside that's if he get in the right situation, he can really blossom. If he get in a situation where he can be the two or even the three, if he's a if he can go to a team and he can start off being a number three receiver, they're just straight slot guy. He will flourish. He'll flourish. Especially in, you know, third and shorts. He can run whip routes and all that type of stuff because he, he got the routes to do it. 
But, um, you know, this is my take on Johan Dotson. I put him on a big board. Uh, draft coming up at the end of the month. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. You could have been in, in a, anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And uh, this is the first video on the new setup. So hopefully it comes out clear and I'll have the camera going next time. So um, peace, guys. With the, with the